Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. I have a very special one today. It is a Slap House remix of All I Want for Christmas by Mariah Carey. Here's a preview of the drop. So you guys can download the samples, presets, and the project file I use for this in my new sample pack called Smack, which I just released today. It has over six different project files for Slap House, and it has over 250 samples and over 50 presets, so go and check that out. So this video would be a bit longer as well because I'm gonna go over all the details of why I did things and also more of the mixing too because I never really talk about the mixing side of it. So I'll be going over how I made it, why I did it, and why it fits in the song. So to start off, I had the vocal here, which I ripped from YouTube, and it was 150 BPM, had to slow it down to 128. So I started off the song with a bass line that sounds like this. And I think this is super important because the re-space in general is just a super dark and like clubby sound. And I think that really sets the tone sets the tone for what the drop will sound like and also all the other elements in your song. Now with the re-space, as you can see, I added this pitch bender here, which I like to do a little bit, which sounds like this. That really just makes it so much more interesting. And on this last note right here, you can see that the next note is so far down. So I added a pitch bend going down into it just so it's a little bit of a smoother transition. So it's not jumping from super high to low. And one more thing with the bass line and like the, the music in general, it's the song is in a major key. And I started the song in the minor six. So that really changes the whole mood of the song. So as you guys can hear right here, I don't wanna that sounds so dark compared if I were to start it on the, the one, the major one. I don't wanna super happy so be careful what you start your chords on now you can start on anyone you want you can start whatever but i'm always aware of and you should be too of the tone you're going for in your track just so it sets the whole mood next just under the re-space i added a piano right here I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just and as far as mixing the re-space piano and vocals go i didn't do too much because they all kind of had their own uh, lane of frequencies. So the re space was really low. Piano was taking those mid frequencies in that vocal. Since she's a female, she takes she's taken over the high frequencies and that really settled out the whole track. So the processing on the vocals was super simple. All I added was an EQ, this track spacer, which I use later in the track, and this EQ, which is doing absolutely nothing. So don't have to worry about that. For the piano, uh, as you can see right here, I filtered it down after that little intro I had. Just nothing crazy, I didn't show it to you, but it's just the re-space and piano. Uh, filtered it down, and then I also have this RC20 on here, which is a key part of the sound. So I'll play it to you without, of it, without it. With. And then, as I said before, I filtered it down so the top end is out of the vocal's way. As far as effects go, throughout the whole song and breaks, I have the uh, these impacts and exhausts, and those go throughout. And those go throughout the whole song. And try to keep those in general. Try to keep those the same throughout the whole track. So it's not like you're getting um, you're getting a new impact at the intro, and then you're getting another one eight bars later into the break or something like that. So try to keep everything the same just so it all uh, comes together well. Now for the breaks and build, I also kept the same exact synth. So there's no crazy synth stuff going on, it's going on here. Kept it all the same because I wanted to keep it simple because I knew the drop was the main focal point of the song. And I knew the vocal itself would just drive everything because it's Mariah Carey. After that, We'll go to the effects, or go to the drums actually, for the break. Um, I had a, Oh yeah, I added a clap in here as well. So right when she starts singing, I added this clap right here. This gives it some groove. This makes a sense of what the BPM is to the listener subconsciously. So if there were no clap, you're just so lost in like where the song is. So add the clap. You're already getting your head bobbing, so you want to get that going as fast as possible. Then I added a shaker right here, just in the second part of the intro, just because to give it a little more groove. 
Now we're on to the first break, which sounds like this. I want to change it up a little bit, so I went a little hip hop style, and I added this loop right here from the pack, and then I added a little snare, then I added this kick. Together, the drums sound like this. And processing on the drums, there's pretty much none because I dragged the samples straight from the pack, so nothing crazy going on there. Uh, same exhaust as before, and as, as I said previously, I used the uh, piano and reese and vocal from the intro. One important thing to note, which you guys probably know, but I'll say it anyways. So this kick right here, I have it side-chained to all my buses, and I have a fruity limiter to side-chain the non-floor non and the four on the floor kicks. So as you guys can see, see it in action right here. And if you guys want to do this yourself, just go to your kick right here and then go on to or click on to one of these channels then drag the volume all the way down and you can open free limiter and go to the compression section right click on side chain and then press kick or whatever you call it okay now for the build up uh nothing too crazy here I added a few more exhausts i like adding tonal uh down lifters so one like this because that really gives it like um like a real like let's go baby like something's happening and then i added the same one a riser coming back up and then i added this snare build right here pretty standard snare build i like to i like to um filter in the frequencies so it's not just hitting you all at once i like to gradually build it in so the second half of the uh, build is just super powerful and this get and it gets you going other than that nothing too crazy i cut off the instrument instruments uh the last bar just to give the vocal some space like this that puts it like front stage so you're really like listening to that and then i added the sub drop here just a cool little transition. And then to tease the listener, I didn't go straight into the drop. I did did this little like, uh, I don't know what it's called, but I'll call it an interlude. Did like a little tease. You think the drop's coming up right here. But it's not. So I duplicated one of the vocals, exported it, and then I just pretty much filled it with reverb and then filtered it out as the vocal came back in for the drop. I also added in the drop clap I used and some of the effects I used as well. Now this is a great transition for the drop because the drop bass is used in this and then I can go straight into how I uh, approach this. So for the bass line in this little transition, it's I have a lot of things going on, but it's super simple. So I will go over here, go to the serum effects, and this is what I do all the time when I need to have a bunch of effects going on in one place. I have this preset here called, if I can find it, load effect chain. You can save your stream effect chains. And I have one called slap house effects. I use it all the time. And then from here, it brings me down sample distortion, phaser, EQ. And I like to mix in the distortion, phaser, and then some EQ as well. So the EQ filters out the lows when I don't need them. So in this little transition, I don't want the lows at all because there's no kick playing. I feel like if you cut the lows out before the drop hits, boom, drop is huge. So pretty much, I pretty much en enabled all of these right before the drop right here. So I'll play it. I think that is so cool because I also drowned it out in some reverb here. And then with that, like I think it just put it in some space where you definitely hear it and you hear it's coming, but it, you don't have the full 100% of what the sound is. Now onto the drop bass, which I think is very interesting. So here's what the bass sounds like on its own. You guys can hear there's three different sounds going on. So there's the main bass, which sounds like this. There's the woo bass, which is like the slotty bass, which sounds like this. And then there's like the rise bass, which is like a cutoff filter on, well, an LFO on the cutoff filter, which sounds like this. 
So this acts as like a reverse almost. So I'll play it to you uh, guys again here. So here is the cutoff one, and here is the, the woo one. So this probably isn't the right way to mix this, but I put all of these into the same bass bus because I wanted these all to sound exactly like they came from the same synth, which obviously they didn't, but I wanted to bust them all internally. Like it doesn't really matter actually, because I bust them twice if you think about it. But yeah, so I bust them all together. The only processing I have on these uh, bass lines are, once again, nothing on the EQ for some reason. I have two EQs doing nothing. And then, okay, I have a Pro Q here. Um, I have a Pro Q3 here, just cutting off the sides below 100. And then I have the bass, because I think the bass got a little loud, right around um, 54 hertz, I guess. So I just have that going. Just to tame it and just to make sure it's clean in the mix. This little notch right here is not something I just kind of heard and did it. I felt like in the mix when I was A-B-ing it with, with other songs that I felt like it was a little too powerful there. So make sure you're, uh, mix, make sure you're mixing with your whole song playing, not just in solo. Underneath the bass, I felt like it was a little boring without like with just the uh, kick and bass. So I added this brass stub. It's one of the samples from my pack and processing on it is just a little bit of Valhalla reverb. And also uh, another key part for me if, of my Slap House songs is the transition every eight bars. So when I take the kick out, I always love to add these same distortion effects and low cutting the bass out every eight bars. So here's what it sounds like. I think that is huge because it's not just the stale same bass. It sounds fine, but it doesn't get the job done. And I like to change it up every eight bars. So like this one right here, I added this Valhalla Frequency Echo uh, free plugin, and it just makes it sound crazy. It's crazy, but just do those kind of things to change it up throughout the song so that it's not the same exact thing every eight bars. Now for the drums, pretty standard drums, just a kick and a clap. Um, I like to add some rides as well. I think a key part of your rides, which this is like a personal mixing for me. I don't like the tick of the rides hitting in my kick. So here's what it sounds with outside chaining, the little first hit of the ride. Honestly, it sounds really similar, but I, don't, I like that kick to cut through first. Yeah, and then under that, just some hats. And that's pretty much it for the drop. I had this little cool kick like Sounds like this in a song. Pretty cool, just change the drums up a little bit. And like with the bass, so when I cut the, uh, when I put these bass effects in, I do like to cut out the kick right here. So the last bar of every eight, I like to cut out the kick in some way, do some kind of cool thing. And quick side note, when you take your kick out, if you don't want the side chain going, turn it off. So every time the kick comes out right here, you guys can see I have the side chain turned off on everything. In effects within the drop, I have this little hay right here. And then I have some exhaust and some risers too. So nothing crazy happening at all. For the vocals in the drop, I duplicated the main one and then I pitched it up 12 and then I made it unique. And then I pitched it down 12. And this gave us like a... This just fills up a little more space. Is it necessary? Probably not since the vocal itself is pretty big, but I don't know. I figured might as well because it's Christmas. Now the final thing, I wanted to add some sort of lead here just to make it a little different from the vocal. So I teased the lead with a cutoff right here. So when the vocal is playing, and then I put the lead back in here with the drop. <laughs> And that lead is also from my pack as well. And processing on that, uh, nothing too crazy. I just have uh, some compression right here. And then I have some reverb. And then I have the peak control reverb actually. So when the lead is, pl when the lead is playing, you can see that the reverb right here cause goes down. I have a video on how to do this. So go check that out. It's like a 30 second video. When I made this melody, I just kind of, um, I utilized the, the repetition. So as you guys can see, they're here, right here in this second bar. 
I did the same exact phrase in the third bar with different notes. I think if you have the same melody, like if you have the same rhythm and it's catchy enough, just keep going with it. So you don't have to make everything so complicated. So real quickly on the master chain, I have a balance just um, adjusting the levels on the breaks because I like to have the breaks quiet and then the drop loud as you should. But make sure you add it first in your chain. I used to add it last and then it's just, it's just not something you want to do at all. So make sure that's first so nothing crazy is happening. Then I have some OTT, uh, some glue compression, just a little bit on the master, using the mastering the glue setting. And then I just have a Pro L2, just boosting it to the max. I use this EDM aggressive and tight preset. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of how I made this song, how my uh, mindset was when I made it, and all that stuff. If you guys have any more questions about anything, please let me know in the comments. In the pack, it's available to download right now. And like I said before, there's six different project files with a bunch of samples and presets. So go check that out.